Hi guys, I've got something a little bit different today. I'm gonna do a pocket page insert that I am gonna put into my Project Life album. I've got these couple of Instax photos that are about me and my sister. We have um, Real Housewife um, TV marathon dates just about every week, so I definitely want to make sure that I record that. And to do that, I am gonna use the new Feed Your Craft and Brandy Kincaid Hold Tight Kit, which I just adore. I really hope you managed to get your hands on one. I'm starting by picking out the cards and I knew I was going to use that 4x6 floral at the top and so I'm picking everything else to go around that. So I've grabbed this purple pattern, this things I want to remember card which I think will be great for doing my journaling on and then I'm going to go through some of the other 4x6s, no sorry, some of the other 3x4s, um, just I need a couple of other ones to fit in here. So these are the cards I'm going to work with and roughly the layout that I'm going to use them in. I am going to cut that purple 4x6 into two 3x4s and use those to back my little Instax photos. Sometimes when you get a kit, the cards aren't exactly the colours you wish they were. Um, and if you're lucky enough to receive uh, digital versions of those cards, like you do with these kits from Feed Your Craft, there are some really simple ways to change those colours in Photoshop so that they fit your spread exactly right. So, like I said, sometimes you might love the design of a digital card, but the color might not quite suit the spread that you'd like to put it in. So I'm going to show you a couple of easy ways to change that. So one of the easiest ways to change the overall color of a card is to use an adjustment layer. And if you can't find your adjustment layers in Photoshop, it'll be under Window and Adjustments, which makes mine disappear, but here's mine. And I'm going to choose um, Hue Saturation. So you can see here, um, there's a few sliders and I'll just show you what happens when I change this slider. It just changes the entire colorway of the card. So if you want something slightly more random, have a go at that, have a play around. But if you want something a little bit more specific, you're gonna to need to use this drop down menu here and choose which of the colors that you want to alter. So let's say for instance in this card, I wanna make the greens a little bit less green and more blue, I'll pick green and then I can play with these and I might need to change cyan. You'll just have to have a play around until you get the result that you're after. But let's say I wanna go for something like this. Now the advantage of changing your colors this way is that you can get quite specific with it. I mean, I can change the yellows if I want in here now too, which I don't because I quite like it like this. The other advantage is that when you go to your layers palette, you can see you haven't changed the original card at all. You've just added an extra layer to it. So the original design is still there and when you save this as a copy you will never destroy the original design that you had which is important because not everyone offers multiple downloads of things you don't want to ruin the original design that you purchased purchased so one of the cards that I wanted to change is this one here and I just want it to be slightly less orange the orange is nice but just doesn't quite suit the colors in my spread so I'm going to go to my hue saturation and I'm going to try maybe reds I think to try and make this a little bit more of the golden yellow that I'm after. Now these second sliders here, saturation, will give you a much more saturated color or a less saturated, so more muddy or more bright depending on what you're after and I definitely want it a little bit brighter and same with the lightness and the, the darkness slider here. So I want this sort of brighter golden yellow. And of course, when I go back to my layers palette, you can see I haven't changed the original card. I've just got something that's going to suit my spread a little bit more. Now for this card here, again, love the card, but the green's not really working for my spread. So what I want to do is I want to change this green color. So I'm going to show you another way to change it because this is just one solid green color. I only need to change one color. So for this, I'm going to go to the select menu and I'm going to choose color range. Now my little color dropper here, and I'm going to click on the green and it's, you can see all the white is selected is all of the green that's in this card. 
you can adjust this fuzziness slider but you'll see what happens to this square in the middle it gets lighter so it's going to change more than what I need it to do to do again like this with a lot of things in Photoshop you just have to have a play around and see what works until you get it to be how you want it and then I'm gonna go okay so that has now selected all of the green in my card. And what I want to do is make it uh, yellow, sort of the same yellow as one of the other cards. So I'm going to go back to um, my original card and I'll just pick my original layer here. I'm going to choose the green and instead I want it to be this golden yellow. So now I have my yellow color in my color palette. I can go back to my card and I can use a fairly large paintbrush just to paint in the yellow on that card. And once I deselect that, I can go ahead and print that one as well. Now you do have to be careful because you can see I have changed this card. Uh, this is the original, so I want to make sure that if I'm going to save this, and to be honest, I don't always save them if I am just printing one for a particular spread, but if I do, I want to save as, and I want to make sure that I'm saving it as a copy. That way you won't override your original file. So now I can print these out and we can carry on with the spread. So here are my reprinted cards. I like the yellow much better with this spread. And you can see I did two different versions of this little phone one. I couldn't, couldn't decide which one I wanted to use. And although I actually like both of them, I really love the yellow one I made. I also did one that was just white and I changed the color of the phone to a brighter pink to match that other brighter pink. And I, I think I'm gonna go with that one. Although now looking at it, I think either one would have worked. I had these neat and tangled sequins that I think go perfectly with the colors in the spread so I'm definitely going to add a little shaker pocket in and apart from that this is how it's going to look now. So I'm going through the many many die cuts in this die cut pack. They are so cute it was so hard to pick which ones I was going to use but I'm just picking out the few that go with my story and with the colors in the spread. So. I love all these little florals, but I was trying to pick out ones that were sort of yellow or maybe that sort of pinkier pink rather than the light pink. Um, and also just adding a little bit of that tealy blue color in as well. So the little clock goes perfectly and I'm gonna add that to my shaker pocket. I'll show you how in just a little minute. And I also added that don't forget and remember to the top. So there, there wasn't a flower in the vase that was the perfect color, so I'm gonna alter that a little bit too. So now I can just go ahead and start sticking things down. So the first thing I'm gonna stick down is my Instax photo, and there are these little binder clip puffy stickers that are too cute not to use. So I'm gonna use two of them, even though my tendency is to hoard them forever. I'm gonna add the teal one and the yellow one to each of my Instax photos. And then I can go ahead and just add my journaling. I'm just typed it through my typewriter. And now you'll see me alter this little die cut. I cut the yellow flower off the top of it and I was intending to add one of the purple flowers, but then I saw there was a puffy stick of purple flower. So I added him instead. Now these few cards at the top here, I just moved them down so it's easier to work on going to add just a couple of little reminder die cuts onto this striped card just to kind of make a little filler card. The don't forget I just stuck straight onto the card and the remember I'm just going to add a bit of dimension by putting it on some foam squares. And I think I'll end up doing the same thing to that banner on the 4x6 as well but first I want to do a little bit of stamping onto this phone card that was my idea from the start that I wanted to stamp in there there were so many stamps that sort of worked for us and the story that I'm telling so I'm just stamping them in um, very awkwardly using this ombre ink pad but only the black side of it because I really like the black I'm definitely gonna have to find a full-size version of that ink pad I added three and then really wanted to add the remember this stamp as well. Um, so in the end I decided instead of adding it onto the phone card I would stamp it onto the little banner and that worked really nicely. I'm just being really careful to just partially stamp each word so I can line them up underneath each other. 
So that's all the stamping I'll do on this particular page. Again, I'm going to add this banner with some of that same foam tape and I'll deal with the top string on there a little bit later. And you'll see me do this all the time on this spread. I just can't work out where I want things to go. So I do spend an awful lot of time shuffling things around only for them to end up exactly where they were in the first place. Now to make my little shaker pocket, I want that um, little clock die cut to be at the front of my shaker pocket. I don't want sequins in front of it, but I also want it in the pocket so it doesn't fall out anywhere. So I'm using an old page protector and I'm cutting down a 3x4 piece and then I'm going to cut down a second piece that is just slightly smaller than the 3x4 and that's actually going to go into the pocket. Now I'm cutting that on all four sides so I end up with two little pieces of plastic and I'm going to stick down the clock onto one of those pieces. Then I'm going to put that into the little pocket piece that I'm making and I'm going to take that over to my sewing machine. I'm going to add the sequins in and they are going to be added in behind that insert of plastic with the clock on it. Then I will stitch around all four sides and then you'll see I've got a little shaker pocket once I trim off all the edges that I'm not happy with. That the sequins always are going to be behind the clock. They're never going to go in front of it. So that's a really easy way to add something into your shaker pocket um, and still have it visible. Because I had added that stitching, I added a little bit of stitching to all the other um, cards there, including that banner. I stitched down the top of it. I told you I'd fix the string there. And then after a little bit more shuffling around trying to make things work, I end up with everything back exactly as it was. <laughs> and I can slip everything into the pockets and call my page done. I always enjoy Brandy's kits so much and this one is no exception. So I really hope you enjoyed this page and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. It means a lot to me. If you want to keep watching, there's a couple more videos on screen. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you next time. Bye.